Hello everyone. Welcome back to our Let's Play of Disco Elysium. I'm Chris here with my co-host Tyler. Say hello, Tyler. We found the Insulia Fastman! By God! Found... That's the fun of music. <laughs> it's so calming and chill. I think I said it last time. Let's tell everybody except Gary. Because I hate him. <laughs> last time we had a long conversation with the deserter. And this time, there's a phasmid. Shall we do you inspect think, it? You know, do you think the phasmid's here because it recognizes justice? Only one way to find out. Let us investigate the Insulindian phasmid. My God. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Oh no, he's gonna make his escape. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Alright, let's listen carefully. We're, I assume we're whispering to Kuno. Let's tell him what it is. That's the... The Insulindian Phasmid? He knows what it is. He does. Oh my Man, god. I hope... Kim had the camera. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. He only had the one shot left, didn't he? Because uh, he, that's how he took the photo of uh, the corpse. I don't remember what he said at the time, but I, th I think he said he had only a couple more, maybe? Yeah. Maybe only one more? <laughs> How do you know about the Phasmid? Everybody does. It's the fucking Insulindian Phasmid. <laughs> do you have a camera? Yeah. I, I don't have a camera. That sucks about Kuno. <laughs> Kuno can't believe how bad he is. Without a camera. In this situation, the Beano Club would be superior in every way. Damn it, Kuno. Kuno. How could you betray me like this? Damn you. He not as much as glances at the gigantic insect to his right. Nor does it look at him. Its antennae take their measure of the air. Slowly. Searching for something. You. Let's say something to it quietly. Something like... Let's whisper a secret. Hello. The creature tilts its tiny head to the side and appears to look at you. It is incredibly light. Like the slightest gust of wind should blow it away. But it doesn't. The air moves through it. It's slender sticks. What is our electrochemistry? Holy shit. We have a one in electrochemistry, but uh, we've got six plus six. So we've got a good chance. That's right. We laid the pheromones on. Yep. And we uh, we heard from Lena about her childhood experience. So that's the, the most important. Here? Oh yeah, what was the miracle again? I believe that is a shivers passive that if you get, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. Uh, don't ask me about the second one. I don't know. <laughs> I I feel like that's uh, if we die, it's like damn, he's died in the coolest way possible. Shall we make the check? Let us make the check. Slow with your breath held. You take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soak in your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. 
Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Let's introduce ourselves. In what way? Uh, hello. Let's just say hello. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Let's stand on our tiptoes and look closely. Don't... If we die here... You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Kuno, it's foaming. It's got the Nickelodeon Whoa. foam. Maybe it's poison? Fucking hell. The foam slowly turns a darker shade like burnt caramel as the insect moves its mouth parts masticating the little bubbles begin to burst one by one letting out that same smell like summer burning inland empire check Ooh, let's raise our hands slowly the insect stops its stridulation seeming to observe you Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Ooh. Let's put our hand down then if we feel afraid. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem, on either side of the insect's small head. I'm assuming it was going to spit foam at us. Impossible to know now. Well, I guess you could probably just go back, but whatever. No, I mean, like, let's do Inland Empire right now. Okay. I Shut up. Shut up. That's, it exists. That's it. <laughs> I exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. Why why do we know German all of a sudden? <laughs> this is never Harry. Uh I'm ill. What is your illness? In my heart, for me, it's sadness. Input after input. For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience the excitement and unexpected sugar rewards. But that is not important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. What are you intruded on by? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am Damn. at the end of an air funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache.
Uh, mm, I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute, empathy for you. It's very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. It's because you're doing the drug-free playthrough. The Arthropods are in silent and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Fat from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me. Because I'm just a leaf eater. Hmm. Not carnivorous after all. That's nice. Oh, just them though. Just this one. <laughs> the others might be. <laughs> well, some of them aren't. That's just how it is. Yeah. It's like Steve the shark. Uh, what exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, calming myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussuran. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Yep. I am so fascinated that this incredible being of a remarkable scientific background, of, of incredible artistic curiosity and biological just fascination, is so well versed in global social political politics. No, well, she's watching, isn't she? She's watching, but it's like she could have just said, like, oh. I don't know. I feel like the language that she used was so direct and accurate. It's like, it's not just like, oh, I saw... Like, it's not enough that she saw three different forms of government move on. It's that she's been here through so many revolutions and saw the landing. It's like, all right. She knows who Suzerain is. How did she know that? Did she read a book? <laughs> well, she's sentient. You know, you can see things. You can be, you can be sentient not read books. You don't have to read a book. Let's, like look at stuff. Yeah, she saw it. She saw Tear stuff about Suzerain. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Maybe she heard it. Are you a miracle? No. You are the miracle. How? The moral you have of denim our jeans. encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form. Well, you are extreme. All engulfing madness. A volatile semen nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Yeah, I can see that. What is the pale? That's what uh, Ruby was using to kill us, wasn't she? A pale emitter, yes. What is the pale? 
It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that. Oh, kind it's of pollution. Power. It's pollution. <laughs> You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? Oh. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Damn, where's how? Let's get nihilistic today. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if he misplays us all one day? We'll just forget. Yeah, let's not blink. Have I always thought this way? No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. Wow, the fucking communist murder plot seems really insignificant now. <laughs> we just got a confession out of him and now we're talking to a fantastical bug who's telling us about, like, the world and our place in it. It's like, wow. Wow, the Cornell shit really just seems hollow now. <laughs> Is this cynicism? Maybe. Uh, I already forgot the whole the whole world once, and I drank too much. So it is already happening. Soon, oh, darn. one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Oh, I thought that was going to go somewhere else. <laughs> oh. Where does this come from? Everything. Let's go with number five. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. We need to know. Maybe we're religious now. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. Wait. So, <laughs> holy shit, you look like a reed and you eat reeds. Let's go with number yes, one. They don't mind. <laughs> Have you ever accidentally eaten another reed fast, mid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. Well, at least they're honest. <laughs> Who hasn't done asexual reproduction and devoured your own children? Uh, I don't know. I bet there's several types of bacteria that haven't. Well, that's just why they're better than we are. Yeah. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a star to display. So I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. Don't tell me the Insulindian Phasmid has been killing the... <laughs> the deserter. I'm a detective. So I have a badge. I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that. I can also detect pheromones. The ones on you tell me that you will not eat me. And that I will benefit from your closeness. In short, I love you. <laughs> Aww. Oh wait, that's because we have the pheromone sprayed on us. That's right. Erotic pheromones. 
Imagine I mean, if your eyesight was based entirely on pheromones. Scope of a rifle's useless. <laughs> uh, what is happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Kuno, am I having a seizure? Doesn't look like you're spazzing out. Kuno knows all about seizures. <laughs> what does it look like? You're just staring at the giant insect. I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Cool. So is Kuno. Kuno's also having a vision of a giant insect. And it's real. Back off before it eats you. I think we've exhausted everything then. No, there is one more. Aw, oh, do we say she's kind of beautiful? Say whatever you'd like. Oh, I don't know which one. They're both good. They're not scary. Uh, mm, this is hard. You are the kindest. You're the kindest creature I've ever met. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman... Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. <laughs> is she talking about our wife? She is, I believe. I will. You know, I will move forward. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. <laughs> let's, let's disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Goodbye, Superman! And just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone! Between those reeds there! Fucking elegant! What's that in the water? The fuck? Is that ceramic? And more stuff? Like a nest in the reeds? We should peep it. Fucking hell. Yeah, let's look into it. What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Yeah, Grandpa's not looking so good. We need to check on him. Alright, what to what to do? What the fuck is in front of us here? The helmet. What? And the scope. Sick. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. At least my collector's impulse has been satisfied. Indeed. You found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. I am truly invincible. How do we look with the complete armor set? Uh, you read my mind. Let's... Yeah, let's put it all on here and then go arrest him just to fuck with him. Oh man, it really does go with the foul and everything. What's the right jacket here? It's a chest I piece. I mean, it isn't just kind of does go. It does go with no. The the chest piece is a shirt, but we wear a jacket. Oh, okay. I think you're right. I think the foam goes just goes well with it. It looks. Hold on. What does it look like with the 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 black coat? Ooh. ooh. 
Hold on, this scarf is, uh, This one? <laughs> yeah, it looks now. Now we're a Bloodborne character. Holy shit! I was gonna say, uh, but a Bloodborne character would have this tie, or maybe this one. Actually, yeah. yeah this is yeah. yeah. Or, this is Bloodborne uh, vibes. Uh, hold Glasses on, put the tar. All. Yeah, hold on. Put, before you do, put the tear away and put the uh, the big thing in his hand. The the boombox. Not the boombox. Uh, the the fucking. What's it? The pry bar. Pry bar. Uh, it's the second one. No, not that one. The other one. Yeah, now he's a Bloodborne character. <laughs> yeah! Hold on, one more. Uh, let me just see if... Uh, these pants... I think the... Yeah, these pants might be better. No, maybe not. Um, no, let's go with the thumb pants. All right, now we're now we're yeah. now we're vibing. <laughs> yeah, it's our end game armor. And here's Klaus's passport. Oh, that's where it went. Okay, so he did have it. Well, we can inspect it if you'd like. Sure, let's take a look. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orania, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazier. Klaus's hidden documents from the empty boy. She said that the false passport would be for Anuk Maya Smith. Let's look at the photo. It's Klausia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. What's this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Fuck if I know. Maybe it's collecting shit, like an octopus can get, like, curious. Well, that's true. Let's say different... Okay, so what? Luke Kuno in on this? Katarzyna Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klazia comes from, remember? God damn it. I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now. In another city. She moves fast. Yeah, she's sitting there in a cafe and she's like, I'm the president of Revishal. <laughs> The leader's like, okay. <laughs> okay. She told me it was her real name. Cool. Got lied to. Double lied to. I get it. You cops need the Kuno on stuff like this. No one lies to the Kuno. What's her real could've... name? What is her real name, Kuno? Kuno's gonna say, it's not any of the things you think it is. Kuno'd have to get deep into this shit. But whatever it is, you got played here, that's for sure. The girl on the passport looks at you with no answer. She is not Katazina Alazia, or Anuk Maya Smith, or Glazia. That much is sure. All right. Yeah, that's a passport, all right. Sure is. All right, shall we chat with the fella? God, this, yeah, I, I want to fuck him up so badly with just how we look right now. It's so cool. What is it? Albeit in... What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. How could you not see the fast, mid? See? Mr. Dross? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. Let's uh, wave our hand in front of his eyes. The plastic cape feels I touched his shoulder by accident. A light shiver passes oh, no. the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. The boy waves his hand in front of the old man's face. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. There's no other response. Yeah, this fried him. We gotta bring him to a doctor. Good news, this solves our boat and piggy's problem. He's not going anywhere. He's trapped here. What happened to you, Mr. Dross? He's old and fried. Kuno's seen this, like, after a massive bender. Kuno's dad. 
Mm. I have to say, his mention his dad, I feel really insensitive that, yes, it's the fast food. Like, no, I don't think the fast food was affecting your dad, Kuno. No, I mean, you're talking about this yeah. guy, but yeah. No, I know. I think it's the I think it's the fast move. Yeah, and then there's that shit. Gramps couldn't take it. It was too much. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. It's definitely talks, but the fast move told me it is. I told you when you were doing your long stand thing. Yo, one crazy cop, you know. Kuno digs it. Thank you. Uh, he seems strangely animated before. Yeah, Kuno knows hobos, and Kuno has never seen a hobo sharp like this after so many years of hoboing. Induced by the Phasmid? Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Because look at him now. Not so sharp, is he? And it's gone. Left. Perhaps it's like kept him going. Like the drink and the lightning keep my old man. Damn. Well, he couldn't see it, Kuno. He can only see the reeds because he doesn't have the heart of a child like either of us do. Let's go with number one. How? Like, it's pretty fucking huge. How? No response. This is how the Phasmid stayed hidden all these years. Then how the fuck did we see it? Oh, oh wait, the longer it's there, like it needs time to sink in, and if you spend time with it... You forget. Yo, Ooh, it's you ever memory. seen a giant fucking insect? The, the... <sighs> now, would we have seen the insulin phasmid if we did nothing for the cryptozoologists? I think you... I think you encounter it pretty much no matter what. It's just a question of what that encounter goes like. Okay. I think, yeah, cause I think that was a pretty baseline, pretty normal interaction with the Phasmid. I'm just thinking if you don't see the Phasmid, uh, because either your skills are too low, like we could have failed that check earlier, but how this, how this conversation with him now go, it's like, oh, he's just old. Always oh, just old and shocked. No, I, I, you see the, I think... You don't have to make a check to see the Phasmid. I think the Phasmid shows up no matter what. It's just well, a question like, of how that goes. Yeah, but like we have to make the check to hear it, though. Well, you might have failed that check, but things still happen. Okay. So I'm trying to think how this scene would go if like you just don't see the Phasmid. Like, right now we're connecting the dots where it's like, oh, the, the, com the communard survivor uh, lived here amongst like a, a, a incredibly cool bug. But if we don't do the quest and know what the bug is, or we don't even see it here, we're just like, yep, he's just old and sick. He's an old, old sick man who's losing his mind. And I was like, how are we going to report this? Like, <laughs> they made fun of us as Dick Mullen at the at the precinct. What are we going to say? It was the bug, I tell you. <laughs> like, this ain't going to go well. Even well, if we I mean, Dross has, has, already, admi <laughs> has already admitted to shooting. The, the he did, he's, yeah. He's already said that he's shot him. But yeah, I'm yeah, pretty like, sure that the Phasmid shows up no matter what, even if you don't make that check. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't I don't remember, but it did. The only thing I can remember is the last time it did, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we're going to have a case file called The Case of the Big Bug. <laughs> it's already the hanged man. Can't rename a case. <laughs> oh, that's true. You're right. It's too confusing. Yeah, let's just conclude this now. Yeah, yeah. You see that too? Got a little jumpy there, didn't you? I know that vibe. I'm off me lightning, too. Found some things in the Phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should. Oh my god, what if we weren't wearing the helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Let's tap the helmet on his head. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. We look like fascists to him right now. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. This is horrifying to him. I can't believe that helmet, man. I kicked it into the fucking ocean and it washed up here. Oh, do you, do you think the Phasmid brought it here? 
this is a shiny thing. I would not be surprised if uh, it's like a crow. This is its nest to attract another reed mate. Let's show him the passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man, at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... Lost it, Mr. Dross. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. Hey! Hey! You took the shot! Bang! And got rid of the evidence! Bug brought it back! Sound about right! Silence. Not even a sigh. I'm gonna let you learn at rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic it's only a matter of time. Flaps around his face. In a gust of wind, his back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hang tight. Yeah, old You're man. Destroyed. Hang tight. Let's slowly start shuffling off Death Island, okay? We're about done here. Alright. We can use the boat to return to the mainland. Hell yeah. Wait, can we look at our stats quickly? Just out of curiosity. No, 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 the the other stats, sorry. Uh what other stats? The one the ones with like the communist oh. stuff on it. I I I have another word for it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The profile, no, I guess. Man, we got communism up there. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Superstar cop. You know yeah. what? Zero zero fascism in this playthrough. I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> we're doing good. All right. Oh, man. What a day it's been. What Could a year this roll. day has been. <laughs> what a year this day has been. Yeah, you can see the flak tower over there. Yeah. That's low tide. Can we just walk to the island now or back to home? Or are we taking the boat back? I have to take the boat back. Uh, that was be really beautiful music. So nice. <laughs> oh no. Not too heavy with all this armor. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Shall we? Kuno, let's go home. Oh yeah? We did good shit here, detective. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff 